Today on Art Is, we're learning how to do landscapes, seascapes, and cityscapes with Dr. Terry Allen. Today's class was at Fig Garden Elementary School in Fresno. Art Is was made possible by a grant from the Bonner Family Foundation in support of the arts and education. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Dr. Allen. It's great to be here this morning. Today our lesson is going to concentrate on landscapes. We're going to look at landscapes, talk about the elements of landscapes, then we're going to use oil pastels and watercolors to create our own landscapes. But of course, before we do that, we have to learn about those. Let me show you a landscape right here. This is one. Take a look at this. Tell me what you see. What's going on? Yes, Matthew? Um, they're probably celebrating because there's a lot of people farther back there. It looks like they might be celebrating. There's a lot of people back here, all right? Here we have a leopard and a lion. But we also have leopards and lions are what kinds of animals? Wild. 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 So we have wild and domesticated animals. We have a child here. We have some people back here. Look at this boat. Okay, this is by an artist named Edward Hicks. And he, he painted this picture to show that wild and domesticated animals could live together, that nature and man could live together in peace. But let's use this now as our example for a landscape. I want you to look at the very beginning here. Notice this, this child. Is, is big, the animals, you can see all the details. You can actually see the whiskers on their faces, can't you? Okay? So where do we know, where are they in comparison to us? They are, are they near or far? Far. far. You think they're far away? Okay. Well, what about this boat back here? Gianna is far. Okay. Now, which is closer, the boat or the animals and the boy? Eric? The animals and the boy. There is are closer, right? Okay, and the boat's farther away. Okay, what about uh, what about these trees here? Okay, they're far away too. Are they farther than the boat? See, so here's the boat, and then here are the trees. They're farther away, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Now, what about these people right here? They're, these are uh, uh, European men, and then these are Native Americans. And they're sitting here talking, and it looks like they have some papers out that they're talking about. Uh, where are they in comparison to the boat and to the uh, animals? They're in the middle. They're in between. Okay, now, how does an artist do that? What do you think, Tyler? When he draws them, he makes them smaller, and the ones closer or draws them bigger. The closer ones are bigger and the, the ones that are farther away are smaller. You're absolutely correct. And that's what I want to talk about today. Down here, where you see all the details, look, look at, you can even see the tail on the lamb and you can see the whiskers on the cat and the, the, the folds in the clothing of the boy or the child here. You can see the puffy hair on the, on the cattle. Very, very detailed. Those things are all in the front and the front of a picture, the thing that's closest to it, is called the, the foreground. Okay, think before. It comes before everything else. So that's the, that's the foreground. Now, let's look over here. Look at those, look at those, see those mountains way in the back there? Yeah. Okay, that's way, way, way far away. Now, we know the mountains are pretty big, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, but what did the artist do to make them look far away? Jalen. He made them smaller, didn't he? And he also put them a little higher up on the, on the picture. So way back here, this thing is, this part of the picture is called the background. 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 Okay, so now the front part of the picture is the background. And the back part is the background. Okay, so guess what the rest of it is? Middle the middle ground. ground. So here we have all the animals and the, the people right here in the foreground. Then we have some in the middle ground. Even the boat's in the middle ground, but look way back there, we have our mountains in the background. Now, can you see all the trees on those mountains in the background? No. no. It's very, it's just, all it is is kind of a shape there, isn't it? It's kind of gray. The farther things are away, the less detail we see. And the closer they are, the more detail things we have. Now, we were talking about landscapes here, but 
And did you know that there's also a seascape? Here's a picture of the ocean. Landscape is a picture of the land. land. So we have a seascape is a picture of the sea. sea. Okay. Now, where is, is using foreground, middle ground, and background? Where is this boat? What do you think, Tayo? Foreground. In the foreground. Why do you say that? Because it's big. It's big, and you can see all kinds of details. Details, exactly. Where is this boat? Middle hey. ground. I'm sorry. Middle ground. It's in the middle ground, isn't it? Okay, and so this one over here is in the. Background. Everybody. Background. Exactly. So we have foreground, middle ground, and background, and it follows the same rules as we had over here. We have big details. A little farther away over here, a little smaller, and then way back in the back over here, and not very clear at all, is our background. This boat's in the background. We're not through yet. If I were to say this is a cityscape, it's the picture of a city. Exactly. Okay, now look at this picture right here. See this tall building? Look at all those, those shutters on the building, and then see the writing down here is called the tentiary, which means it's a, a place where they dye clothes and stuff. And then here's the piano shop. And then the farther back you get, hmm, you can't read very much of it, can you? Okay, so this is in the foreground. foreground. This is in the background. And this is in the middle, middle ground. ground. Exactly. So you've got the idea. So in whether it's a cityscape, a seascape, or a landscape, we all have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. And in each case, the details are better in the front. And they're also a little lower in the picture. Look at this. This is lower. This is a little higher up. Higher still. Over here, this is lower. This is just a little bit higher and a little bit higher. So those are three elements of a landscape. Now we have two more to go. Let's go back over here to our landscape and let's talk about this tree right here. What happened to that tree? What happened? What happened right here? It got what? Let's see, Devin. It got cut off. I want you to do this for me. It got cut off. Well, boys and girls, that's called cropping. So do that one more time. Cropping. Say the word for me. Cropping. cropping. Good job. Okay. The cow got Crop. cropped. And uh, let's see over here. The rocks got Crop. cropped. Let's go to our seascape over here. What happened to the ocean down here? Crop. It got cropped, didn't it? And over here, this building got cropped. Exactly. Now, why does the artist do that? The artist does it to make things look closer. So I'm going to give you an example. Everybody has a card with a hole in it like this. Okay, pick that up for me, please. Now I want you to put it up to your eye like this. Close one, and look out. You can see a lot there, can't you? Okay, now very slowly, take it away from your eye. What's happening? Just think about it. What's happening? You're getting closer and closer to things, aren't you? And things are getting cropped. So, it's just like the camera lens. You can see a lot when it's up close, but the farther out you get, things get cropped. But they appear to be closer. All right, put that down for me, please. So imagine here, if this artist wanted to show more of this more of the woods and the mountains and so on and the rest of the cow, what would he have to do? He'd have to back up, wouldn't he? Okay, and when he does, he gets farther away. So in order to make it look close, he goes, he, t he goes in and he crops the pieces off to make it look like it's closer. So we have foreground, middle ground, background, Crop cropping. cropping. Okay, the next one is kind of fun. Jose, would you like to stand in front of me for just a minute, please? Okay, where is Jose? Everybody knows he's in front of me, right? You can see it. How do we know he's in front of me? Okay, what do you think? Kaylee? Uh, he's smaller. He's smaller than I am. Okay, Jenna? He's kind of overlapping you. He's overlapping me. Can you imagine she used just the right word? You can't see all of me, can you? Why? Because he's overlapping. he's in, overlapping and he's in front of me. That's what artists do to make things look like they're in front of other things. They overlap. Thank you, Jose.